Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. This from Match.com. Where you can find millions of losers any day of the week. This fine article on dating. It's called, He Was Into Me. Until he heard I had kids. Written by Margot Carmichael Lester. And here's the story. It's every solo mom's dating disaster. Getting rejected because your date discovers you've got kids. Meh. <laughs> Molly Reams of Richmond, Virginia said, When I first got a divorce and my son was really little, I would avoid telling someone upon meeting him about my son. But she says that that strategy wasn't successful. First, she says, the guy might feel like you are hiding information about yourself when he does find out. Or he might not like kids. What are you going to do about that situation? You may think the more he spends time with you and gets to know you, the more he'll warm up to the idea of kids. But that's just not the way it goes. Well, of course that's not the way it goes. I mean, unless your only reason for dating guys is to get laid, ladies. And I don't know a lot of women who are like that. Lots of women love to say they are like that. Yeah, you know, chicks need to get laid, too. We need to get laid, too. It's not just guys who need to get laid. We need to get laid, too. You hear that one all the time. But as we know all too often, ladies, you can't just leave it at fun. And eventually you start making demands on our time and... Demands for monogamy and uh, demands for who knows what. Taking Junior to his Little League game or whatever, and suddenly uh, no longer is it just uh, having some fun. We need to get laid, too. Yeah. The writer goes on to say, Instead, you need to say it loud and say it proud when dating. I have kids. Explain Reams. When I meet a man now, I make a point of mentioning my son immediately. I'm proud of my son. And any man I could possibly think of dating has to know my son is important to me. Sounds good in theory, but the reality is it hurts if he decides not to date you. That's why it's important to remember that the dude who rejected you doesn't really know you. He may reject the idea of dating someone like you, who has three young kids, an ex, and a big dog, explains Dr. Sheila Newton, a Beverly Hills-based psychotherapist. That's how you know they're legit, when they are Beverly Hills-based. So what, she says, have you ever thought he probably isn't the one? Reams agrees. Dating is a buyer's market, she says. You should shop for what you really want in a man. The same is true for them. They will shop for what they really want in a woman. So if a man doesn't want to date a woman because she has kids, that's part of his shopping list. You can't take it personally. Oh, says the writer, but you want to. Instead of taking it on the chin, though, reframe rejection more constructively. And she gives some bullet points here. One, you've saved yourself time and potential heartbreak by getting him out of the way before you get more invested in him. Again, see... As much as women love to say, we need to get laid, too. Uh, even this uh, writer here, who is a woman, essentially is conceding my point that uh, women just can't leave it at having fun. They just can't leave it at porking. They just can't leave it at sex or being a booty call. There are, are there exceptions to the rule? Sure, there are. Most women want a relationship. They want a commitment of some kind. They don't just want to get laid. Guys love just getting laid. Are there guys who want to be in a relationship? Yeah, we hear from them too, but uh, 
The majority of guys, if you said, you know what, I'm cool whether we have a monogamous relationship or not, you can do whatever you want. Most guys would do whatever they want. Which would mean they'd have a regular piece of ass that they see because it's reliable and available. And then uh, a little strange once in a while uh, during that time of the month or, uh, you know, when uh, Junior is up late doing homework or whatever. That's how most guys are. Another bullet point here. You now have the motivation to learn more about the qualities you're looking for in a man. And finally, you can stay focused on what is important to you and how to set your priorities straight. The writer goes on to say, to turn the sow's ear of rejection into a fashionable little silk purse, follow Newton's four tips. One, rebuild your ego. Ask your most trusted friends or family members to tell you what they like or love about you. Listen carefully and remind yourself that you're looking for someone who can truly appreciate these special qualities. Just reading what it says here. Two, make a list. To tell the qualities you want in your partner when you interview potential suitors. Check their qualities against your list. Eventually, many guys will eliminate themselves and rejection won't be an issue. Three, don't get desperate. <laughs> this one is um, useless. Don't get desperate. You're going to be desperate. You know why? Because guys who have sex with women with kids many times are just looking for sex like single guys are all the time, except women with kids are generally looking for a relationship. They generally are. You know why? Because if a woman wasn't looking for a relationship, she'd never tell you she had kids. She'd never talk about them. She'd drop the kid off with the sitter. Or she'd drop the kid off with her parents or whoever. She'd have sex, and the guy would never be aware of that. It would never come up. It, w it would just never come up. The reason it comes up is because when a woman who has kids starts having sex with a man, ultimately she hopes that will become a relationship. That's it. With few exceptions. And those few exceptions always run to the phone. Don't waste your time. We know there are exceptions to the rule. So what? Who cares? She says, think of him as a new a pair of new shoes. They may look exquisite. The price may be within budget. But if you put them on and they don't feel right, put them back. There's certainly no shortage of other fabulous shoes out there. Same with guys. Guys, are you a fabulous shoe? you got to be kidding me. Three. Sorry, four. Be patient. You don't want to settle for less than you and your children deserve. Fighting Mr. Wright can take some time. Yeah. So you see what this is all about. This is not about getting laid for women. It's about finding a relationship. And guys, you want to get laid. The reason you go to Match.com, no matter what kind of verbiage you type up into a profile, is you're looking to cruise that website trying to find vulnerable women who will give you what you want. Relatively anonymously. <laughs> That's what it's all about. The whole pretense of romance. Come on. You know, unless you're wasting your time on that eHarmony.com where you've got the 27 dimensions of personality... And you get on there and you meet the other people who listen to Christian radio stations like you. Uh, these sites are, you know, sometimes they're like adult friend finder where people just blatantly are looking for sex. And then they're like Match.com where they pretend to be looking for relationships, but the guys are really looking for sex. And the women are much older and fatter than their pictures and they frequently are hiding children. They think you'll fall in love with them, and they plan to hide the kids. But that's why they write an article like this. A lot of these women plan to hide the kids until they've sucked you into a relationship and then reveal it to you later. They actually think you're in love with them, when in reality, pfft, you just would have worn a condom if you knew she had kids. That's, that's the thing. You weren't going to wear a condom, and now you know she's got kids, and my God, who knows if she's on the pill. <laughs> You ever get to that position, by the way, you have sex with somebody, and you just decide to go bareback, what the hell, I'm going in, you know, and you do it, and then, like, you ever sit there, like, 16 hours later going, what the hell did I do? I just had sex bareback with a complete stranger. I'm not even talking about HIV. Who knows if this chick uses birth control? I have no idea. 
She knows my license plate number, for God's sake. <laughs> the uh, story I'm reading to you from Match.com, here is how it wraps up. It says, by changing the way she looked at dating, this woman, uh, the last name uh, Reams, has figured out what's really important to her. Why would you want to be with a man who doesn't accept the total you, she asks. Are you going to choose making him happy over your responsibilities as a mother? That would just make most women miserable. So why choose to be in a relationship that is not going to make you happy and feel good about yourself? She concludes, being single is not the end of the world. It gives you the opportunity to find the right relationship instead of being stuck in an unhappy one. Well, what this boils down to is that many women, uh, like the women who go online and post a profile, many women think they'd like to just go out and get laid, you know, uh, uh, they're divorced, their ex is having a better time than they are, uh, they're tired of listening to uh, the DVD of Mulan playing 4,000 times in the background, and they would like to have some adult conversation, maybe some sex and what have you. And many women think, because they've read so many articles about, well, we need to get laid, too. Many women think they're going to go out there and just get laid and just fill in a little of the... The spare time they have at night with uh, some guy who's going to nail them, and that's going to be it. But then what it, it always gets back to is that many of these women simply fall back on what they've always done. They have sex, and then suddenly they decide they want to pull this guy into a relationship. And so they say, well, Lee, if I tell him I've got a kid, he won't want to be in a relationship. So they'll lie, they'll hide it. Uh, or then they're afraid, well, what if I tell him? Well, it's like, you know, if you're just having sex, you don't ever have to tell him. I mean, you would not be having this debate in your head if all you wanted was sex. This is one of the biggest lies women tell me. We need to get laid, too. First of all, lots of women don't even like sex all that much. They use sex as a, uh, well, we call it a loss leader. A loss leader is that item at the supermarket. You know the one I'm talking about. I, they, they had this at uh, Ralph's a week ago here in Los Angeles. Ten two-liter bottles of Diet Pepsi for ten bucks. Now, you know that's, that's less than the cost of producing 10 two-liter bottles of Diet Pepsi. 10 two-liter bottles of Diet Pepsi for 10 bucks. Of course, the reason they do that to you it, to, is because it's called a loss leader. They will lose money on that deal to get you in the door to sell you other stuff at higher prices. It's that simple. You know, it's not even a trick. It's the oldest way of doing business for a supermarket, and it's the way women do business. You know, whether, whether it be oral sex or just having sex or whatever, many women use sex as the loss leader, like the 10 two-liter bottles of Diet Pepsi for 10 bucks. Okay, sex. All the sex you can eat. All the sex you want. All the sex you can stand. Sex anywhere, anytime, whatever you want. You can come in now. It's a big blue light special, man. Blue light special. All the sex you can have. All the sex you want. Whatever you want. Any which way. Any position. For the next 10 minutes only. Come on in. It's like that. They use it as a loss leader. And once they've got you in there, yes, yes, they sell you a T-bone for $47 a pound. That's what they do. Then the sale ends on the 10 two-liter bottles of Diet Pepsi for 10 bucks. Then they go back to their usual price of $1.99 a page. And that's how women are with relationships. Okay, Women use sex as a come-on to get you in the door. Then they tell you they don't really like sex, or they don't really like oral sex, or they don't really like having sex when the kid is home, or, oh, I forgot to tell you, I've got a kid, I uh, hope you don't mind the fact that I have a kid, and by the way, now that date we were going to have Saturday night, well, we're going to go to Disneyland and have a date instead, we're all going to go to, like, uh, we're going we're gonna to go to uh, Thunder Mountain together, that's where we're going to go, it's going to be our big date, $52, we'll go to Disneyland, that's our date, and then uh, dinner afterward at Chuck E. Cheese, that's the deal. <laughs> Absolutely true. Absolutely true. So stories like these prove what I say all the time, and that is that you know, women love to say, Hey, it's not just guys who like sex. Women need to get laid, too. You know, no, it's not just the... You see, men need to get laid, but men need to get laid the way we need to use the urinal, okay? We have no attachment to the urinal. I mean, uh, at best, maybe we'll remember that it was made by American Standard or Kohler. <laughs> Just the way maybe we'll remember your name, girls, when we have sex with you. 
but uh, that that cold white piece of porcelain with with a handle on it, uh, we're not falling in love with that thing. It's just a place to go. Okay, you girls, by the same token, you know, uh, you will offer to be our depository, but then once you do it, you'll you'll start telling us now the real cost of doing business. Did I tell you I have three kids? I, I don't know how I forgot. And that's what a lot of this computer dating is all about. And this, uh, you know, these online websites like Match.com. You know, it's a bunch of, bunch of fat, to fatties, oldies, and fuglies. They'll get on there with their high school graduation pictures or whatever. And uh, they tell you things like, uh, you know, they'll ask questions like, do you, it'll be the questionnaire that they answer, but their answer says, do you want or have kids? And they'll, here, here will be the answer. I'll tell you later. Ever see that? I'll tell you later. After we meet, after we bond, after we have some wild sex, then I'll tell you if I have kids or if I want more kids. But not until. And that's what this is all about. Can you hide the fact that you're fat? Can you hide the fact that you're over 40? Can you hide the fact that you have children out there somewhere? Can you hide all of that? So you will use sex as the come on. And then later on, through the anonymity of the computer, you can hide all of this, and then later on you can say, oh, by the way, I'm actually 42. I'm actually a grandmother. <laughs> That's what it's all about, isn't it? Tom Lifeless. 1-800-5800. Tom. I don't like you. Why not? Because I'm listening to you. The Tom Lifeless Show. It's the Tom Lifeless Show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, it's Kristen. Hello. Hello. Yes. How are you? Do you care, Kristen? I do care, Tom. I'm doing great. Good. Hey, I just had a quick comment to make, and I do love your show. And actually, I love the tasting room. I think that is awesome. I Thank listen you. to it all the time. So, great. just wanted to let you know that um, your comments about you know men and women and women and sex, etc. I think guys kind of lose interest or don't put out as much in the relationship early on as, you know, as women do, too. I mean, you talk about, you know, girls giving, you know, great oral and this and that. Guys, you know, do that, too, in the beginning, and then they don't, you know, keep well, it up. That, yeah, but see, the difference is that speaks for men wanting to just go from booty call to booty call. Maybe right? that's what everybody should be doing. Well, I, I agree, but if you do kind of want to do, you know, have the family thing, um... You know, at some point you you have to you know have a relationship. I mean, not always, but that's just you know what I'm saying. So I tend to think the people of the best relationships uh, care the least about sex. Mm-hmm. I agree, absolutely. Because people who really really like sex like variety. Right. But is there a? I mean, is there a a happy medium there at all? Um. <laughs> You're talking to a guy who's been married and divorced four times? Right, I know I am. All right, so uh, my response to that would be the following. Um, I think that uh, I, I agree uh, with a comment once made by, of all people, radio personality Don Imus, who later himself got married. But he was asked <laughs> at the time why he did not remarry after a divorce. And he said most of the people he knew with great marriages had boring jobs. Oh. That was one thing. Another, uh, that uh, is my own uh, creation and my own belief, uh, honestly, um, I believe that people who, for whom sex is really, really important mm -hmm. are rarely happy in a marriage. Mm, okay. Because, uh, look, let's face it, most marriages end up with something that, that we accept in society that is really pathetic. You know, right. When you're going down to the sex shop to buy, you know, oils. Right. Or, or you know, I feel, you know, terrible for people that have to go. You know, gadget. Put on the furry suit or do whatever to. Yeah, you're, you're dressed in the caveman or, outfit. Exactly. I mean, oh, I mean, my yeah. God. Like, you know, all of that because it just gets so boring for most right. people after a while. That's what they're down to. You know, if you've been down to Sears for the glamour shot, it's over. No, and also, no, I have not. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Absolutely. And the other thing, too, is that I, you know, the least amount of work to get the most amount of pleasure is... If you ever you sat know, at, at the Sears at the mall in a no. teddy, I'm telling you right now, it's over. No, I shop, but I don't go to the mall. 
I go to the Seattle Public. Well, there are freestanding Sears. We have one in North Hollywood here in Los Angeles. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I just want you to really know um, the main reason I called is I just want you to know so much that I enjoy your show, The Tasting Room, so much. Well, thank you. It is awesome, and it's a completely different side of you. So. Thank That's you, Kristen. Awesome. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Maria on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Maria. How are you? Do you care? Yeah, I do. I'm doing great. Well, I had a comment um, talking about women and relationships and women who have children from, from previous relationships. Um, I have two kids. I'm in a relationship, but I've always said... Uh, to others and to myself that if something happened in my relationship, I would not traipse men in and out of my children's lives and and date around. I would probably do things on the side, but I would never introduce anyone to my kids until they were older. Nothing but like would that. you hide the fact that you had kids? Pardon me? Would you hide the fact that you had kids? No, I wouldn't. Well, I that, wouldn't well that means, you see, that that means what, I, what I've been saying. I mean, that means when you have sex, it's because you want a relationship. Uh, because uh, And it, it belies all of the calls I get from women. We need to get laid, too. Yeah, but women don't just want to get laid. There's very few of those. Yeah, I agree. There is very Because if all you want to do is get laid, you'd never talk about your kids. You wouldn't have to. Yeah. I, and who knows if they would really know or care, because I would probably be doing things on the slide for my children. Like, oh, I'm going to dinner with my girlfriends right. and have a rendezvous. Right. I don't. I would not trape men in and out. Knowing how men are, I would never do that. How, and how are men? <laughs> I listen to you all the time. <laughs> oh, you mean that men and men want sex? That's right. And why, why trape them? Why introduce them to my kids who are precious to me when, you know, they don't really care about my children like I do? Why do you so, even tell these guys you've got kids? Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I would or not. Now, that's that, and I'm not in that situation. I'm just saying I've always kind of thought I would do things on the fly and just not deal with the dating aspect until my children were out of the house. Really? How old are they now? Oh, they're very young. Very young. Very young? They're very young. Three and an infant. Okay. But I've always just thought that. Uh, an infant and you're dating already? No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not at all. I'm saying if that were my situation. If it were? If it were my situation. Well, what right. is your situation? Yes, it's not. No, no, but what is your situation? Currently, I'm in a relationship. You're in a relationship? With their father, yes. With their father, but you know, oh, this old call from Seattle, right, not married. Right, right. Uh, and you did that, Why? <laughs> no, I'm not going to go into that. I just wanted to make the comment. Come on! Ah, no, I just wanted to make the comment that I just wouldn't trape people in and out of my house. I would never do that. Right. So that there is just one, at least one person, one woman listening to your show uh, that probably would save dating for one of my children. Yeah, but she's the one who's on a continuous date with a guy she won't marry. <laughs> I just wanted to make my comment. And I just I made mine. Think. Thank you for that. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. If your boyfriend makes $28,000 a year, you are hideous. The Tom Likas Show. The John Like His Show. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Sean, hello. How you doing, Pops? All right, son. I wanted to make a comment about the uh, the whole uh, dating women with kids thing. I, I completely agree with you on just about everything you've said on today so so far, but came to a realization about, I don't know, probably about a year ago. And uh, I was discussing it the other day. I'm 33. I was in the gym the other day with some guys who are a decade younger than me talking about how there's no way in hell that they would ever actually want to go out with a woman with kids, too much baggage, too much in the way, just don't want to deal with it. And I perked up something I learned in the last year, which was if you go out with a woman with kids, they got a lot of external responsibilities. So it's not like if you go out and you have the one-nighter or even if you keep them around for a little while, 
They're not the kind of woman that's going to be showing up at your door, calling you at odd hours. They've got a lot of other responsibilities in their life, and they just got to sit back and hopefully take what, they're gonna, what time you're going to give them. Well, you understand that unless you know them really, really well, and even then not necessarily, um, the, 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 one mistake, yeah, knock them up, and you'll be paying because you know they're going to have that kid. No, that's that's true, and uh, I've I've been down this road several times before, and each time I've realized that this girl's not calling me, this girl's not showing up at my door unexpected. When she does call, it's time to come service, clean the pipes, and, uh, you know, I'm, hey, I'm ready to roll on that, but I don't have to worry about it a week at a time or even a few days at a time, and uh, I can put it in my call, go get the action, and afterwards it uh, seems... There just seems to be no trouble. You ever there, find yourself wondering a day or two later if uh, she's knocked no, up? No, no, no. You ever find yourself calling chicks, you know, a couple of weeks later, you haven't heard from them? <laughs> wondering if they did, went out and did the EPT and never called you? No, that's, see, that's, that's what the, uh, the 10 years, 15 years of wisdom has taught me in my 30s now. So I always got the so range. you can tell. Always you can tell the ones way. who want to get knocked up and the ones who don't. Yeah, that's true. For the ones that already got them, they think they already got enough problems on their hands. So uh, a lot of them as well have already gotten their own birth control going. And uh, But, you know, just to make certain, I've always got my own raincoats on, you know, have raincoats, will travel. Well, I'm glad so, to hear that, Sean. Janae on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Janae. How are you? Do you care? <laughs> I do care. You know why I care? Why? Because I'm a new listener, and I love your show. Thank you. I think you are so brutally honest about every topic that I've heard on your show, including this one. And I'm telling you, if women would just tune in and listen to you, they would not have the problems that they have right They now. get so upset at me. I know they do. But you know what? I was right. Well, let's go back to your topic. First of all, my mom, she had, we have eight kids. She had eight kids. And she was a single parent. She raised us by herself. I'm number seven out of eight, so I have five older brothers. And they told me the game early about guys. So I like it when guys are brutally honest because it saves me a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I have been married three times. I have two beautiful children myself. And when it comes to the dating game, let me tell you, I have it. I don't want to say that I know men to a science, but, hey, I just take it like, look, tell me what's going on. I know what to expect. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's just how you have to deal with men. You don't go in trying, like you said, women want to get laid, too. That is a lie. Women get attached. That's right. We can't do it. So I don't know why they fool themselves to think that they can, but they can't. That's and right. Those who have children, if you're looking for a relationship, you know what? Hey, tell the guy up front. And by the way, there are a million signs, you know, whether it be a woman telling you about how proud she is of her daughter or that she has a daughter. How about the women who take a man, like, you know, you have one of those aimless days wandering around, I don't know, Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica or whatever, and right. you, you come up on, uh, like, a pet shop. And uh, she looks at me to see how I am with a puppy. Right. Mainly because she's auditioning me to see how I'd be with her kid. Exactly. Exactly. Right? You know what? I, like I said before, I told all my friends, and you know what? Some of my friends have heard your show, and they, you know, some of them just cannot stand you. But mm -hmm. they can't stand you because you are brutally honest. And we, we, we women, we need that. We need that. That's right. I'm sorry. I mean, to those who disagree with me, a touch, whatever. I think that you're terrific, and I like the way you just lay the law down. I think that you are a godsend to women. I think they should just tune in, and they, if they would listen to you, they would save themselves a lot of problems. Absolutely. Janae, thank you for the call. Kristen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. But I really don't care. No, I'm just joking. Hey. <laughs> I love your show, but I'm upset and disagree with what you said. I'm 28, single mom, divorced. If I find myself pregnant, I'm driving myself straight to the abortion clinic. Well, that's wonderful, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not convinced that uh, most single mothers are like that. Well... I mean, it's too much crap you have to deal with. You want to deal with another baby daddy when you've already, you know, you're already dealing with one. Why would you want to deal with another? Well, that's you. I think a lot of women say, hey, you know what? He has to pay. He has to live up to his responsibility. And uh, they just assume that that's the way it's going to be and that's that. There are some women whose lives are so empty they've got nothing better to do than chase a guy through the courts for 18 years. Yeah, but then they're guaranteed to never find another guy because who's going to want to deal with a 
a woman. Who oh, there's always some sucker out there. Look, haven't you watched cops? There's a bunch of guys wearing wife beaters out there, perfectly willing to get into a situation like that. But what kind of girl wants a guy like that? I mean, a lot of them. Look around. No, that's that's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed that I'm a single mother of one with one dad. I mean. Like I say, one evening of watching cops or cheaters, and uh, you know that uh, there's plenty of people like that out there. Yeah, but they're, I don't know. I was just going to let you know that there's a Kristen, single mother. you're in Dallas. You've seen yeah. cheaters, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, I would never have another, I would never, you know, I, I don't mess around without protection. I won't do anything because I don't want to have to deal with that again. And what happens if the condom leaks to you? You would, you would go to the abortion clinic. the abortion clinic. I'm not having another kid. No doubt about it. Why don't you just have uh, have your tubes tied? Well, I, I want to have kids later, but I need well, to be You married. just said you'll never have another kid. No, the I'll, word... I'll never have another kid without being married. I mean, I, I was married when I had my first one, but I'm, there's no way I would have a kid without being married now. All right. And I'm old enough. I have a good job. I could support it, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to. I understand. How old is your kid? He's three. Three. So yeah. you had a kid and that pretty much ended the marriage? Is that what happened? I had a kid, and she was eight months old, and he went and cheated. Uh-huh. So... Were you not putting out? Oh, I have a boyfriend, but he... No, no, I mean, were you not putting out when you were married? Oh, no, he wasn't. He wasn't? Because he had a girlfriend. Well, he was, it was a little stripper girl, like... It wasn't, like, a continuous thing. It was kind of a couple one couple here and there. Like, I don't know. I don't really know the whole story, but I'm out. So... Just checking. Better off without him. All right, Kristen. Well, thank you for that. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. There's not a day goes by where my wife and I don't come home and say, hey, well, did you hear what Tom was talking about? And we get into a nice argument or discuss about it. Cool. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Claudia, hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, oh my God, it's an honor to hear you. I'm so glad I, he- I hear you, and I-, I can talk to you, actually. I've been uh, an avid listener since over three and a half years now. Uh-huh. Uh, I love you. I love your show. And uh, although I never saw how you look, uh, probably I could just go on your website and find out. I don't care because I absolutely love what you sh- what you have to say. Cool. Uh, here I'm calling today because I uh, I will be agonizing for the next six months, and uh, please allow me to tell you why, and I need your input on this. Uh, I am a single mother. I'm 31 years old. I'm a single mother of a five, I'm sorry, six-year-old child. And um, I'm in the dating scene, basically using the online uh, dating scene, because I have a hard time, uh, you know, meeting people, going out to meet men, and I definitely don't want to bring them home. I don't want them to know about my child. I'm very, uh, very, uh, you know, careful about who I introduce uh, to my daughter. Anyway, about a little over a month ago, I met this guy uh, online. We met. We actually saw each other, and we ended up sleeping together. I mean, it, it, I was very clear about why am I seeing him. However, I did not tell him I have a child. Anyway. So wait, when you say you were clear, you you told him you just wanted sex? Yes. Well, I mean, we met on that on that website, and we met, you know, that it was in for intimate encounters. So... You know, when you both, why we're, we're, we're seeing each other, although at some point he said, if you're not comfortable, we can see you again. And I said, no, I want to go for it. You know, I am attracted to you, and I, I do want to be intimate with you today. Anyway, um, I got a very, I think I had a, well, I think I had a very good feeling about who he is, by the way he was groomed, by, and any, anyway, we went to his house, and I saw what his house looks like, and it's just like, Spotless place. He has OCD. Most likely has OCD as me because I'm a clean freak. What does that tell you about a person? Well, I mean, I, I know there are downsides to being uh, compulsive about things. However, dear, would you like to see some well-groomed individuals okay. with with neat with neat apartments? Uh, you head down Santa Monica Boulevard any Friday or Saturday night? Oh, come on, let me tell you more about no, it. Well, I'll get to it in a second. But do you understand? Uh, there are plenty of well-groomed individuals with clean apartments who are <laughs> HIV positive. Do you know that? Oh, Tom, I think I, I need to tell you more about it. And yeah, and I. Well, go I, ahead. Oh God. Okay. Anyway, uh, so my thought uh, about it was, you know, well, anyway, we made love, 
few times in the night. At some point during the night, I think we both got, kind of got carried away, and we had a very short conversation about, you know, when you know when is the last time you had a protected sex? You told me, you know, about six months ago with my ex-girlfriend, and I got tested then. What about you? And I said, I got, I just got tested yesterday, which is the day before I met him when I had my um, my physical. Yeah. And the thing is, like every year, I get tested for absolutely everything, not just AIDS, uh, HIV, also uh, syphilis and chlamydia and gonorrhea and everything else. What unprotected sex with a guy because he had a neat apartment? The Tom Likas Show.